Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to go over a little bit more transition skating in Skater XL. I just posted a couple days ago an advanced tutorial guide that went over the basics of the most advanced tricks in Skater XL. So it's basically like the basics of the hardest tricks. So the reason why I showed you those techniques in that video is because it applies to everything in Skater XL. So we're here today at the, uh, it's not really a mini ramp, but I call it the mini ramp because it's like the smaller transition compared to the half pipe. We'll skate a little bit of both, but we're going to skate the transition section on the big ramp and what we're going to do is apply what we learned in the advanced tutorial video to the transition here i have a i do have stats menu installed on my pc but all of my settings have been turned off for this video so when you watch this everything can be done on console these are the base stats um, I have a wider board just for cosmetic reasons, just because it looks cool. I have a gold board. Other than that, all of my stats, all of the gameplay stuff is turned off. We're playing on base settings. That is the regular high pop, that's the low pop, that's the regular flip speed and everything. One thing I'm going to do though, I'm going to use the map editor mod really quick. I could use the rail, but what I want to do here is I'm going to spawn a box in. Uh, just a grindable box so I can kind of show you guys what I mean by how the technique from the advanced tutorial applies to the quarter pipe. So we're going to actually break it down step by step in as much detail as possible. So one of the things I did was show you how to backside tail slide. And the way that we did that was by turning our sticks inward like a power slide in the air, right? So basically instead of going up and holding the trigger and holding down, which makes me pop out the same direction as the tail slide I'm in, if we turned our sticks, tail slide, we come up the same direction as we were uh, popping in as. And that can be used in transition. So if you press the stick down, you can bump out of it as well. So what we're going to do to backside tail slide the transition is the same technique as this. Except for we're not going to ollie into it. We're All we're going to do, like the power slide right here, is how we're going to get into the slide itself. On a mini ramp or on a transition, you, you could pop into it technically. Um, there's four different ways you can do tricks in Skater So there's four ways I can do that same tail slide. I can pop into the tail and pop out of it. I could roll into the tail, roll out of it. I could pop into the tail, roll out of it. I can roll into the tail, pop out of it. There's four different ways that you can go in. There's two ways you can go in, two ways you can go out. And both combinations allow four different tail slides, pretty much. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna do a backside tail slide on the quarter pipe like this. So we're gonna come up to the quarter pipe. We're going to turn our bodies inward like uh, a power slide essentially, just like a power slide, like this. But when we're on the quarter pipe, we're going to actually go into the tail slide like this. We're going to power slide, and we're going to hold a little bit of trigger too to turn because, as you see, I backside tail slide this. I'm coming at the angle at about 100 degrees, 90 degrees. When I'm coming up at a quarter pipe, I'm coming nearly 180 degrees, or a little bit less, but it's going to be more of a power slide, more of a turn. You have to hold the trigger more. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to come up. We're going to hold the trigger. So we turns. We're going to power slide. And there's your tail slide. And then you can, you can press the right stick to bump it in. I got, I got kind of stuck there. But we'll try it one more time. So I'm going to hold the right trigger as I go into it. Power slide. And then back tail. You can kind of adjust yourself as you need. That was pretty sloppy, but that's how you do it. Basically, all of the tricks that we learned on the... Um, and that works for elf tricks, not just back to the tail slide. It works for blunts, too. We did the same thing for blunts. We turned our sticks, we raised our nose in the air. We learned how to power our blunts like this, right? We turned our sticks, we raised our nose in the air, and the, the controller scheme I'm holding, the controller overlay in the bottom corner is how I blunt, essentially. So if I all lead into that, that would be a blunt slide. That was pretty sloppy though. You have to use a little bit of trigger too to, to straighten yourself out. That was a blunt slide. If I go to this quarter pipe and do the same thing without popping, I'll land in a blunt. So you want to make sure that you're doing the power slide method so you can turn back in. So here, here, here I'll go. So I'm going to turn my stick to the side and now I'm blunt sliding. And when I pop back in and use a little bit of trigger, I'll pop back 180 in. You gotta keep in mind, watch your triggers. Don't be pressing the triggers too much while you're grinding because your pop-out direction is determined with your triggers. So if you're kind of spamming the triggers while you're in the grind, you're not gonna know what side you're gonna pop out on. If you're in a grind like this, and I don't press any trigger, I pop out the same direction that I came in as. If I'm in a grind and I press the left trigger at all during the grind, anytime, I will pop out over the coping. You can also use both triggers at the same time. 
makes you pop forward. That's useful for multiple grinds in one. But be careful of what you're pressing when you're in the grind. If you're pressing the triggers and spamming buttons, you're going to be popping all over the place. It's all about control with this game. It's a simulator skateboard game. It's not an arcade experience. This is very, very tough to wrap your head around. Everything that you do in this game relates back to real life and how you would do it in real life. When you're doing grinds in this, like a blunt slide, for example, or a feeble or 5-0 or tricks that require you to ride on your back truck, you want to make sure that your front truck doesn't get stuck. So if you're going to go for a blunt slide or anything like over the coping like that, you want to make sure before you go into the blunt that you kind of lift up your nose so your front truck doesn't get stuck on the coping in a nose grind. So if I didn't do anything like that, I, could, I would probably get stuck in either a board slide or maybe a crooked grind. You have to kind of almost manual as you're going over the coping to get your nose over the coping. And we'll do some other tricks here too. So let's do a backside smith grind. So how I would do it on the box here, I would pop up, I'd use a little bit of right trigger and I'd aim my front stick down and kind of my back stick a little bit over like that, right? So my front foot would kind of be shifted to the side. And that's, that's a back smith, right? On a box. So what we're gonna do is apply this technique with a little bit more trigger and no pop to the quarter pipe because I'm turning more. It's not, I'm, not, I'm not coming at this angle. I'm coming at I'm coming at it straight on. So I need to power slide a little bit more into it, like a backside tail slide, essentially. So same technique as the back tail. We're gonna come down, get, lose, use a little bit more trigger, and aim yourself downward. And you see that one? I pressed down too early, so my nose, my truck, my front truck got caught on the coping first. What you wanna do is power slide to make your, your truck, your back truck go on first. I have to use a little bit of the right stick too. If I don't touch the right stick at all, if I just let it hang, it's not gonna actually grind. I have to use a little bit of the right stick to make sure that it actually catches the coping. And there is a back smith. It said back 5-0, but that was pretty that was pretty dip to me. Let's look at the look at the replay. Let's break it down slowly. I'm gonna look at the replay. So basically, it came up. Power slid, I almost caught the coping there, almost caught it with the nose, but I power slid into the coping and had my nose pointed down. To me that was, I could have been dipped a bit more. That was a pretty good backsmith in my opinion, I could have been dipped a lot more. I can see why they called it a 5-0. But you can see that's the trick right here, this was the hard part. Power sliding to get my back truck to be the one that comes onto the coping first. That was a close call though. See that? So power slide to get the back truck up. Let's try another back tail. I'm gonna go to fakie this time. I'm, not, I'm gonna keep holding the trigger in the same direction. Go to the back tail, and then I can turn back into fakie. Go up. No stall. If I drop it in, I could pivot if I wanted to. Um, just another quick tip. You can pump in Skater XL. You can pump. So you don't need to push between ramps. If you pop, I'm regular stance. It's the opposite if you're goofy, so I'm regular. So popping with my right foot is my right stick. That means pumping is the opposite direction of popping. If I pop by pressing down, it means I pump by pressing up. Uh, the same thing for nollie. If I, if I nollie by pressing up on the left stick, that means my pumping is by pressing down. And that goes for switch stance and everything too. That being said, if you use one stick, it makes you go a certain speed. If you use both sticks at the same time, you go even faster. But that's how you pump in Skater XL. So what you want to do is bend down, and when you are at the corner of the transition, you, you see this little, uh, see where it meets the ground, where the wall meets the ground. You want to pump and let go of the sticks in that spot there, and that allows you to pick up speed. So if you're pumping, you can pump going up the ramp and pump going down the ramp. So I can go around this whole thing. Without even, uh, without even popping. And that's how you pump in Skater XL. It gets speed. I can raise the stick, pump it in. That's a 5-0. Go over this. Press my nose up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna click the left stick down to pop it, to bump it over without popping. And I can even pop in the transition too, like that, if I wanted to. A lot of times in my other, in my other videos, I do a lot of popping into nose blunts and popping into stuff because if you were to do a nose blunt in real life. Um, typically you would pop it, so it depends on how you want to do it. I could I could technically go up like this, like I already explained, and I can power slide into a nose blunt, the same technique that I did with all of my other grinds that we explained already. But that's not exactly how it would really look. It would more or less be a pop. 
I would most, mostly do like this, probably. And even, I, would, I would sometimes even pop it in too, because that's kind of how most people in real life would do it. It depends on how you want to do it. I could pop in, pop out. I could pop in like this and just roll in if I wanted to. I could uh, roll in to the, to the blunt and then pop it back in. Uh, it's it's unlimited unlimited variations. You can do whatever you want. And that was pretty sick. That was a nolly tray. That was blunt. A little disaster there. Um, some people too, they think the mods make the transition and skating easier in this game, which can be true. But the mods that I use, the mods that most people use on PC, make the game harder. So everything that you have on console and the base stats actually make transition skating easier. It's not it's not easier with mods on PC. It's actually harder. It's much easier to skate transition on console because you have all this time in the air. It's a little bit floatier, but it's still super super um, satisfying. You get you get a lot of stuff done. You can land all your tricks. It's really frustrating with mods, honestly, sometimes because you're hitting the coping constantly. The the higher pop in this actually works really well with the transitions. So that's. Basically it. I'm going to show you a couple more technical ones. One of the hardest grinds, it's, it's going to sound stupid, but one of the hardest grinds in Skater XL is a 50-50 grind. They're especially tough in the quarter pipes and transitions. So what we're going to do, you kind of want to turn your right stick a little bit. So it's going to be a little bit of a kick turn, just like real life. So you want to get your uh, back truck on first. So you kind of, kind of manual over it a little bit. Kind of do a manual a little bit. Get your nose over. So you don't want to catch the nose and land in like a like a willy grind. If you, if you just did that, you know, you'd land like a willy. Kind of want to get your back truck up first to control it. So kind of manual into it and then immediately press the nose. And this is how I can 50-50. I can press down and up. And then I can bump it in. And I said that was a bunch of other tricks, but let's try to get a nice 50-50. Okay, I totally missed the coping there. Let's come back around. That was a board slide. We're gonna keep going. We're gonna keep going. We're gonna get this. It's, it's one of the toughest grinds in Skater XL. So that was a 5-0. Okay. Back it up. Pump around. Backside 50-50. Make sure you don't raise the nose too much. That should be 50-50. There you go. That was a 50-50. That wasn't too bad. So what I did, I kept the coping. And see, right about... That was really bad. I actually went onto my nose first, which wouldn't normally happen in real life. But I tried to slide my tail onto the coping. You can see right there that my, my board started sliding. I should have did it a bit earlier. But that was a 50-50. Locked onto the back side too. I was not bad looking. And then I just, uh, right here, I pressed the stick down and bumped it in instead of popping it in. So it's all personal preference what you want to do. Uh, but yeah, so also your pop out direction too helps a lot too. So a lot of people I've ever explained that if you essentially, if I'm on this side, the left side of the coping, and I nose blunt, if I press the right trigger while I'm doing this, you're pressing, pressing the right trigger. So I'll grind, press the right trigger, and then pop. It sends me over the coping. Same thing, if I'm on this side, I'm grinding, if I press the left trigger by accident or whatever, I'll pop over the coping. If I press both triggers, I'll pop onto the coping. And keeping that in mind will help you from popping back on, but sometimes you can make it so you do it on purpose. So how about this? We'll try a blunt slide, pop it back into like a nose grind or something. But here's a blunt, both triggers, pop, nose grind, bump it in. Okay, not bad. I'm trying to think what else we could do. So the torquing method too, if you want to get more technical with tricks in transition, torquing works as well too. So we learned how to backside tail slide, right? With the power slide method. If you hold the trigger in the opposite direction of the stick, like of the direction that you're turning your lower body, so you're turning your upper body in one direction, your lower body in the other direction, like how we learned how to do 270s, you can do that same thing in quarter pipes. And it's really helpful if you actually bump it with the with the stick. You don't have to pop it in. If you do that in a quarter pipe, so I basically I turn my body to the right, I held my trigger to the left, 
and then I swooped my legs around as I came out of the grind, but I, I pressed the left stick, or the right stick, sorry. So he bumped out of the grind without popping. And that's really, really, really useful for transitions. So I'll come down here. I'm gonna power slide to the right, do, uh, I guess, a Suski. But then I'm hold, holding the left trigger, and you can see that he kind of winds up. It was it was really, really sloppy. But let's try it one more time. I'm gonna try to do a tail slide and come in like 360. So tail slide this way, hold the trigger the opposite direction. I bumped it in. And that's just uh, for learning purposes. You can get that a lot nicer, but this is what happened here to break it down. So I turned my body, my sticks to the left or the right, just like how we learned how to tail slide. Got into the tail slide, which was pretty bad, obviously. But as I was holding the tail slide, I started holding the left trigger. You see how his body starts turning? The board starts turning too. I couldn't, I couldn't counter it very good. But I then right at this very moment right here, this moment, I clicked the stick, went into the slide, and at this point, I was wrapping my sticks in a circle while holding the trigger to come around in a 360. So I was doing this on the ground. I did this. This is that's how I turned into the slide. I just I just mongo pushed, but this is how you do it. You just sticks outward or inward, hold the trigger. That's how you kind of revert, right? And that can apply to everything. So I can go up to this. I can blunt. This side, bump in on this side, revert. That was kind of sloppy. Let's just let's just skate around and apply it to tricks now. So I'm gonna raise my nose up for a front crook or nose slide, revert back down, pop over this whole spine. How about a half cab blunt? And that one I popped into. I didn't cover this too, but I'm also for all the pops, right? We went over this in the, in the advanced tutorial as well. There's low pop, which is one stick. There's high pop, which is two sticks, and there's medium pop, which is two sticks down, but you let go of the front foot. And what that does allows you to unlock the abilities that you would have in, in the low pop stance or the high pop stance. So when you're pressing both sticks down, you can wind up, but if you let go of the front stick, you can still use the, the rotation that he got from the wind up, but it only will pop low. And I use that for all of the grinds in this. So if I were to do a pop into nose blunt, I wouldn't really press both the sticks down and wind up and then pop because it's, it's it will work, but it's pretty big. What I do is medium pop everything. So both sticks down, hold the trigger, let go of the front one, and it allows me to spin quickly and have a low pop and look uh, relatively nice. That's that's possible in everything. So that's a, like a medium pop. Instead of popping super high to the ramp, I basically just like nolly, low pop, and I landed on like a backsmith. That looked kind of cool. That's, that's how you can add style, and this is, keep in mind, this is all default stats. I'm playing on the same stats that are on console right now. All this, uh, all this stuff applies. Sometimes, too, even when I'm grinding, whenever I grind something in this, um, I'm not sure myself even what direction the game's gonna pop me out on. So just before I pop, just to make sure, I press the trigger anyway. Sometimes, even with that grind, it should pop me back into the coping, but I'm not exactly sure if I press the thing or not by accident. So like, like this, I'll press the trigger just to reassure myself that I'll pop back into the same side. It's it's a good practice to get used to just to make sure, and uh, it'll help you with consistency. It's a, it's a really good practice to start doing that stuff. Uh, but yeah, so you can uh, blunt this, Click the left stick, revert in, and yeah. And all of this stuff, we could take it over to the transition over here too. Let's take it over to the half pipe, but that also works for grinds too. So I can go up, one slide, pop it in. You normally wouldn't see that on like a mega ramp like this, or like a half pipe. But here you go, there's a nice little, uh, Nice grabs. All I'm really showing off here is the pumping action. So when I'm going between the ramps, as I land, I'm pumping. Go down this ramp, pump, let go. Pop, grab. Um, I landed low again. But pump, pump, pump. When you're doing grabs too, you can also tweak. You don't have to just grab. So if I did an indie grab like that, I can tweak it. I can reverb back in. Try like, try like a combo trick now that we learned all this stuff. So you could like tail slide, bump out, nose manual, you know, 
do do whatever you want. There's like a unlimited possibilities with this game. Okay. Oh, do like a tray flip. Real fat combo. Oh, that was bad. Ah, okay. Tail slide in, revert. Also, like the you can drop in too. I went over this a little bit before, but you can drop in and skater kill too if you manual gently over the coping. Gently, you can typically land in a tail slide or tail stall like that. And if you want, you just bump it in with the left stick, click it down, bump her in, bump it in. All right, let's go this way. Beautiful. 50? Okay. Oh god, I got stuck. I got stuck. I pressed the wrong direction. Sometimes it does happen. You press the wrong direction, you can get stuck. It happens. Okay, that was really weird. Well, anyway, that's basically it, guys. We covered everything I want to go over today, so we did basically everything. If you guys missed any of the tutorial or trick tips from the previous tutorial, I'll leave a link below to the advanced tutorials. All that stuff applies to this, but we went back over pretty much everything that you could fully cover. So mainly, the main goal here is, is to essentially do everything that you learned with the power slide method and turning your sticks without ollieing. So typically on quarter pipes, you don't ollie. You're basically kind of power sliding or pushing yourself into it. You want to be very aware of where your trucks are going to be and what happens. It takes a lot of practice to understand how the physics work in this game. But if you relate it back to real life skating, it can really help you a lot. Practice this stuff. Link your clips in my Discord. If you have some good good clips or good stalls and stuff, link your clips and videos in my Discord. I have a whole section there of Skater Excel stuff. Let's see what you guys got. If you guys like the video, please like and subscribe. It would really, really help me out. Hopefully this does help you out with transition skating. If there's any questions though, leave a comment below. Practice them as much as possible. And other than that, guys, I will see you next video. Peace.